that comes up to 12 volts. We have ignition voltage and we turn the crank. Crank request signal yes, but starter relay is off. So why are we not cranking? Been a couple days since we fixed the 2011 Chevy Malibu with the injector wiring problem. And now the customer stuck at a gas station he called me up and says, he drove here fine, no issues. Now his car is a no crank, no start. Sounds like a very different problem, doesn't it? So first thing we want to do is obviously check for codes. And we have no codes present. Show you guys here real quick. Exit. So here's what the car does doesn't do anything in accessory, nothing turns on. In ignition on, all the lights come on the dash, it's ready to go, and crank does nothing. So, codes menu, display codes, DTCs, no codes present. Let's look at the data. I wanna see if the computer can see where this ignition switch is. So right now the key's on, let's turn the key off. Ignition voltage is zero. Ignition accessory signal. Ignition uh, voltage is. So, see, when I turn it to the first position, it says off. Turn it to the second position. That comes up to 12 volts. We have ignition voltage, and we turn the crank. Crank request signal yes, but starter relay is off. So, why are we not cranking? I'm worried about this ignition accessory signal data PID. Why is it still off? So we have to look at a power distribution diagram and see if that's a key input for starting. Okay, here's a power distribution diagram. This is the redrawn non-OE, just faster. BCM, ignition sensor fuse, two amp, and then the BCM senses which position your key is in. So let's see, look at the ignition switch. The only pin that says accessory that's connected is this brown wire. That's your accessory. Pink is hot and runner start. That's good, we verify that with the scanner. And then start is the white wire. It says, off, run, crank. Well, if you go back to starting and charging, this is the OE diagram. There's a start relay and it's controlled by the engine control module. And the engine control module receives the signal to start. Uh, let's see, that's park neutral. And the BCM tells it when to start. You can see there's the resistor, 1.3 kilo ohms. It sees it, it says request to start yes. However, we're not starting because I believe we're missing this feed on the accessory circuit, the brown wire. So we need to find this brown wire either at the BCM or under the steering column and see what's going on there. Could be a bad ignition switch. So the easiest place to test this brown wire for voltage is at the BCM, which is right here on the passenger side, and it's going to be connector X4 pin C8. Took a little while, the connector X4 is on the back, and pin C8 is up here, and you can see the double brown wire right there. Test light. From ground, if we touch a positive, it will light. Let's see if it lights on this brown wire with the ignition switch in any position at all. I don't think it will. Nope, nothing. Something clicks there, but no crank. So what I wanna do is simply jump power to this brown wire, through a test light, we can be very safe. It's only a sensing circuit. 
You can see it's a very thin gauge. I think it was on a two amp fuse. So let's jump it from this positive to the brown wire in the accessory position and see if see if things come back to life. So that should only be hot in one and two. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Here's our test light and watch this ignition accessory signal when I tighten the piercing probe on that brown wire. Key is in the on position right now. On, boom. Will the car start? No, <laughs> it will not. Crank request signal. Now crank request signal is no. And if we disconnect the test light, this is off. Magic. How does that make any sense at all? The owner said that this problem happened twice when he originally bought the vehicle, but it hasn't happened since. So let's try that again with the ignition accessory feed. This is very strange. I hope we can reproduce this problem. So let's shut the car off. We definitely did something. Test light's disconnected. So our crank request is good. Starter relay turned on. Now is it gonna start every time? So let's connect our ignition accessory voltage. And yes, we can actually listen to the radio now. Our windows work. Will it crank over? No, it will not. It wants the ignition accessory signal to turn off when you turn the key to crank. So crank request signal is no. We disconnect this. Yes. <laughs> so is there something wrong with this ignition switch? That's my guess. So we have to go towards the ignition switch. We've got the car started. So I think this BCM wants to see that initial accessory voltage before you know going to ignition or crank. It's probably a logic thing. But why is it not consistent? That's my question. I think that's his problem. But how, how does it usually start? You know, this has been a problem for, since he bought the car, he says the radio never worked an accessory. Why would it decide not to start this time? Hmm. Great question. But regardless, we need to fix this brown wire feed problem to the BCM. So I looked up service info, getting to the ignition switch is about an hour and a half procedure. So we're gonna do for now, a customer will make an appointment next week uh, to get that replaced and I'll order one. If that's the problem, we'll put a new one in. But for now, what I did was kept the piercing probe on the back, ran a jumper, and whenever, if, it, if this happens again, I told them, Turn the key to on, touch the accessory to here. So the BCM will recognize that you're an accessory. Let it go and it should start. So that will be the temporary solution until we get a new ignition switch for this thing. But very interesting, uh, interesting case once again. Okay, so we're in the process of replacing the ignition switch. Not the easiest one to get to, but at the same time, you just gotta remove this underside dash panel. And before popping in the new switch, 
we're in the brown wire as close as a switch as we can get and just want to make sure the wire integrity from the switch to the BCM is good in the off chance there's a wiring problem and we're we don't want to replace the switch if we don't have to so right now an accessory switch signal says inactive the switch is on in the ignition position so if I touch this probe to power like at the DLC right here that pitch should switch from inactive to active so let's try it so I'm touching it right now and it says active and I let it go inactive so wiring is good let's pop in the new switch and see what was wrong with the old one all right so we got the new key in temporarily turn it to accessory nothing comes on and the scanner still says that our power mode is ignition switch accessory signal inactive did we miss something on the wiring diagram well where does this power come from red and white wire right and the car sees the position in all the other uh, you know key positions ignition is starts most of the time what could we be missing be missing do we have a feed in this red and white wire well with a test light to battery ground make sure the test light works yes it does red and white wire up here and we're not seeing anything and if we switch to ignition we should have power on the pink wire in two and three do we have anything on the pink wire no we do not the ignition sensor fuse 2 amp in the BCM let's go there that's this guy right here below the relay it's a 2 amp fuse get the test light in the shot here and one side's hot the other side is not ah so we didn't go quite far enough in the diagnosis last time this fuse for whatever reason is not continuous and that's messing up the entire ignition switch let's see what's going on with our 2 amp fuse does it look well it's definitely definitely not continuous but let's um let's plug in a fused jumper wire and measure the amperage on that fuse in all the ignition switch positions so that's why we wanted to verify everything before throwing an ignition switch at it and if this is the only problem then obviously we're not putting in a new ignition switch and the customer will not have to pay for that extra labor just the diagnostic okay so we have an ammeter plugged in in series with that fuse through a fuse jumper through a 5 amp fuse this time and let's see what happens so check it out we're an accessory now it says active and look at the power mode it says accessory run and crank it crank request run perfect it all works and our ammeter did, did not go above 0 0.03 amps so 
how did that fuse suffer? Why was it broken? That's my question. And actually everything works here on the radio. The little dinger works. And I don't see any changes on the actual meter here in terms of what would short this thing to ground. We could do wiggle checks, but at this point, if it's just a blown fuse, then it is what it is. So we didn't really have to do all this work and, you know, for a blown fuse, if you can't recreate the short, or if you're not sure if it was a short, sometimes fuses just from thermal cycling give out. But, you know, a 2 amp fuse on a circuit that only draws 0 point, you know, 29 milliamps, hmm, not sure. We'll install a fuse, install the original ignition switch, make sure everything works, and let the customer drive the car. And if the same thing happens again, we'll go a little further. But, you know, in this case, just uh, replace the fuse, put it back together, and just charge the diagnostic fee. That's it. All right, so I put the original ignition switch back in. Ignition switch accessory signal is active. Shut the car off. Accessory and off. Off. One more time. Accessory. Run and bingo. And that's it. So, blown fuse explaining this problem. So let's back out of here. I'm sure we're gonna have some trouble codes, but passenger compartment lamp control circuit. Ignition device ignition accessory circuit open. Gear shift unlock circuit short to battery or open. Can communication lost com with VTD. Let's clear them out. Okay. Passenger compartment lamp control circuit short to battery or open. Okay, well, that's the only code left. Start it up one more time. Seems to be pretty happy. Last thing I want to do is go to the engine. ECM, our check engine light came on. Control module communication bus off. Let's clear that. Okay. Okay. No trouble code system normal. All right, let's put this thing back together and give it back to the customer. So I want to kind of recap this Chevy Malibu no crank diagnosis and repair. I admit it, dropped the ball on this one. What were the things that I missed and how could we improve for the next time to make this process more efficient and avoid 
you know, free labor. I, I got some practice installing an ignition switch. I guess I learned something, but um, in this case, the problem could have been fixed right in that parking lot at the gas station, and uh, the customer wouldn't have had to schedule an appointment to replace an ignition switch and put the old one back in. Uh, first thing, when we first scanned it for codes, there were no codes stored in the engine computer. However, we did not do a full scan of the entire vehicle. I think for newer cars, no matter what the problem is, just do the health report. It takes a minute, but you'll get the full picture and the BCM had, you know, very informational code stored. Loss of communication with the theft module, no power in the uh, accessory position. Basically half of this ignition key circuit was completely dead. So the diagnosis was not, you know, should not have been that misleading. So that's one thing, scan the all the modules for codes because just because the engine computer doesn't have codes BCM is really the one who controls you know the power modes and the starting so uh, we're looking in the wrong place we're on the right track in terms of the data but that wasn't the full picture uh, second thing is don't rush the wiring checks we were at the BCM we checked the brown wire this guy right here and obviously we saw no input. Yes, that's a problem. However, we could have also checked the pink wire in 2 and 3, and it would have shown that we had no power there also. And even in the key off position, you see this, this fuse that was broken. I wouldn't call it blown, it was just a little separated. Um, also feeds this white wire when the key is inserted, it's in the off position. That also would have had no power at that white wire. That would instantly tell you, hey, <laughs> look at this fuse. But the thought process was, hey, we're just missing this brown wire and the computer or the BCM can see ignition and crank. So you just assume the problem's in one position, right? We're like, hey, the fuse is fine. We just have a problem in the accessory. Not the case here because this is kind of a double ignition switch. There's two separate circuits, so the car could see ignition and crank through this other leg, this white and black from the BCM and back into the BCM sense circuit. So basically, we're missing this piece, but the car would still, most of the time, crank and start even though the theft to turn module was missing that turn on power feed. So if we checked these three wires and scanned the car for codes and all the modules, wouldn't have had to tear the dash apart. So let me get, know what you guys think in the comments. I'm sure people have their stories about, oh man, I wish I would have done this differently, or I could have saved a couple hours of labor if I had just did this one check. I want to hear your stories and you know the the most important thing is to learn from uh, things like this next time we'll be a lot more uh, diligent and thorough so thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye bye